Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray, and this right here is Billboard. It's so easy. It feels great, you know, kind of getting away from it, uh, doing extra. Uh, you, you, I kind of lost a little bit of the passion. You know, I love uh, making music and not waking up every day and doing something you truly love. It, 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 it felt a little bit of a loss for me. You know, I was blessed to be able to do it, and now to sort of be back in the machinations of writing a record, touring a record, talking about a record, it feels like home again. It's so right. it's so there's kind of a misconception on three levels that, that A, we broke up, and we never broke up. We played about 30 to 40 shows a year uh, while I was at Extra. And the other misconception is that, um, you know, this is some giant comeback record, because it certainly isn't. You know, we're releasing a record after six years of not releasing a record. And the third misconception is that we're doing this for the money, okay? Because, you know, unlike the No Doubts and Blink-182s, they're playing the sheds, they sell tons of merchandise. We've never been that bad. You know, we're, we're lucky enough to play House of Blues-style venues, and we're back to one bus, and all the band and crew in one bus. And it's, you know, it's sort of taken it really back to how it was in the mid-90s for us. All the things that I used to say, all the words that got in the way. You know, we're also able to collaborate with some other artists who I'm a huge fan of. Donovan Frankenrider, who is fantastic. He's sort of a protege of Jack Johnston. And uh, Rivers Cuomo, actually, of Weezer, actually gave us a song as that he wrote called Love is the Answer. And, you know, the band is such incredible, psychotic Weezer fans. That was truly an honor to, to work with them. And it was the second song we did, and it really did a lot to sort of kickstart the feel of the record as well. And I think it's almost like, you know, Rivers, like, he's so ahead of the curve and what's cool, it's like, Sugar Ray is so not cool, they're almost cool to him, that he's ushering in the irony early from the 90s. That's the time I fall in love again. Well, Music for Cougars is an honest reflection of where we are now. You know, we played a, we played a gig about a year ago at a place in Hollywood called The Grove. And it's this big sort of Disney outdoor mall vibe. And uh, we played like Sunday in the afternoon. And we're playing a song and uh, <clears throat> my friend leaves over to me and goes, dude, look out there, it's all cougars. And bing, I went used for cougars. And I kind of stuck in my head. And it was kind of the fun working title for a while, but the more something sticks around, the harder it is to go away. And it's kind of fit the, the idea of the record. And people want to talk about it, so I think it's great. I mean, one thing people know is for sure that there's a Sugar Ray record coming out, you know? If you can't break us down, you're dead and for the door. Well, I'll say this, we've certainly had the peak of Sugar Ray, we're never the coolest guys on, on the block. You know, I'm certainly qualified for douchebag status, I understand, I've worked hard for that. I've done a lot of lame things that are well documented. We're not the best band in the world, I certainly don't have the best voice in the world. One thing you cannot take away from this band is the songs we've written. You know, yes, I'll budge on the other stuff, I get it. You know, the, the hair, the stupid things, the names, whatever, but you know, the songs are one thing I'm very proud of this band. And I'm honored to be able to do it, and I don't need much. I need a microphone, a couple guys, and a case of beer, and let's have some fun.